Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to speak with the animals. Bit by bit, I started to learn the language of the wild and discovered that mimicry is one of the best ways to get a close view of some of our most timid wild creatures. If you click on one of the animals you see around me here, I'll try and teach you how you can learn their language and get a good close view of your wild neighbours. <laughs> cuckoo, the sound of spring. Well, to make a sound like a cuckoo, you can buy these whistles, which are pretty good. Put your finger over the end here, makes two notes. Just the right pitch. But to be honest with you, I prefer to use my voice. I use the falsetto range of my voice, like this. What's important is that when you're cuckooing with a whistle or your voice, you leave just enough gap between each of your cuckoos to allow the real cuckoo to cuckoo back. You know what I mean, like this. Collar dove, much more common all over Britain, stays here year round, so you're likely to hear it at almost any time of year. Some people confuse the voice of a collar dove with a cuckoo. Big difference is cuckoo has two notes, collar dove has three. Again, you can get these whistles, which are great for mimicking all types of doves and pigeons. Just the right tone. <coughs> Or, I use the falsetto part of my voice, like this. You could even try making a cupped form with your hands and blowing through your thumbs. Don't always get this right, let's give it a try. Collar dove. <laughs> Foxes. Well, the red fox has a very wide vocabulary. They're most vocal in the winter months, December, January. That's when they're breeding, that's when they're courting. And it is then that you're likely to hear, most often the dog fox, sometimes the vixens do this, barking. It doesn't sound at all like uh, a, a dog bark, it sounds well, like this, I use a falsetto part of my voice. Sometimes it's called the woe woe bark. Again, it's very important to pay attention to the gaps you leave between the sounds. Don't just keep on because you'll scare a fox away. Do it once or twice, then perhaps a, a curious fox will fancy you come and check you out. Foxes also have a screaming call. You may have heard it. It sounds like someone in big trouble, like this. Ah! 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 I make that sound by breathing in across my vocal cords, not out. Tawny owl, beautiful sound of the night, a bird that you might hear over most of mainland Britain and indeed most of Europe. You can get uh, whistles designed for the job like this, has a little hole in the end which is important because it means that you can get two notes out of it, I'll come to that in a minute. It's the male tawny owl that you're likely to hear, that's the typical song. Females do do it but they've got a croaky voice, they're much quieter. The male has a fat, fluty voice, much louder, a bit like this.
very important to not only leave a gap between each series of calls, but there's a long gap from the first hoot to the end. I'll do it again, like this. You could also try using your thumbs. Cup your hands like this and blow through the slot, like this. That was a bit pants. I'll try again. And if all else fails, you can do it by whistling, but it's very, very hard to get the, the right amount of volume just by whistling, or it is for me. The only reason I'm putting my hand over my lips is so that the wind doesn't stop my whistle from being low enough. I'm not hiding anything, promise. The female does call. She makes a, a sound which is often referred to in books as key wick, which is a very high, <whistles> but it's not a whistle. It's, it's, it's a vocalization. And the closest I can get to it is by blowing air through my lips like this. But it's a bit reedy. I'd stick to the male. Stick to the song, I would. Ha! Great spotted woodpecker. Well, they don't have a song as such. They do vocalise, they have a high chipping call. Chip, 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 chip. But uh, that's not what they say when they're declaring their territory. What they do is they drum against a branch, both the male and the female. They sometimes duet, often in early spring. And um, if I was able to drum like a woodpecker, I would probably be the best drummer in the world because they can beat out 10 beats a second and I just can't do it like this I mean I'm nowhere near it they go brrr, brrr. can't do it but woodpeckers are fiercely territorial and if they think that there's a woodpecker intruder on their home patch feeding they'll come and check it out so if you can make a sound like a great spotted woodpecker feeding which is bashing around on the branches looking for bugs in a territory you might well get a very good view of the local woodpecker coming to check you out. A bit like this. You've got to imagine that you're looking for grubs. Don't beat out any solid rhythm. You get the bird checking it out, looking in the nooks and crannies. <laughs> red deer, you would, wouldn't you? Well, red deer have a number of different vocalizations, but they only get really noisy during the rut. That's when the stags find their voice and they bellow. They do so to warn other stags of how big and strong they are. They do so to attract the ladies, the hinds, off the hill so that they can mate. And uh, I don't have a particularly big chest or a deep voice, so um, I'm going to work with a little bit of plumbing here. It's just a tube, just a straight tube, nothing to it, but um, it just gives a little bit more resonance. So here we go, red deer stag rutting. going to be posting lots more films on our YouTube channel about field craft, how to get close to animals, how to get good views of animals. So don't forget to subscribe and then we can let you know when there are new films to view. See you soon. <laughs>